Hello my friends, how are you doing today? I'm so glad to be here with you. Finally I was able to come and uh, sit down quietly and calmly and uh, I'll try to read you a book. And today it will be a book called Write in Fiction by Avi Cassil. And the cover says, let an expert help you write successful fiction. In this book, our V. Cassil is an experienced teacher and author of Dr. Cobb's Game, The Goss Woman, and other best-selling novels shows you how to organize your writing talent to produce novels and short stories that command attention. Have you ever think about um, being a writer, a good writer? Okay, this is um, second edition. This is the front of the book, and this is the back of the book. Okay, here it says. R.V. Castle is the author of many short stories and articles, as well as 18 novels, including Dr. Cobb's Game, The Ghost Woman, Clem Anderson, The President, and Pretty Leslie. He has taught in writers' workshops at Columbia, Harvard, Purdue, Iowa, and Brown, as well as in several short-term writers' conferences. Okay, next I'll show you because it's very beautiful. I like how it is pointed very nicely on this side and then a little picture over here. Writing fiction second edition of the castle. Twenty small link and Bluewood Cliffs, New Jersey Spectrum Book. And this says that it was nineteen seventy five year. To all my teachers and all my students, I might not tell everybody, but I will tell you Walt Whitman. I like it. Do you know who is Walt Whitman? Well, you can Google it. <laughs> Content. Author to reader. Section 1. The Mechanics of Fiction. Today we will read only the part says author to reader. Yeah. And let's start. Did you get your um, beverage with you to enjoy and listen? Okay, let's start. In this revised edition, I have retained much of the text that has been, I'm told, useful to very many young writers. Since the book was first published in 1963, I have added 12 years to my experience as a teacher and writer, as book reviewer and advisor to publishers. So, now that experience covers a full quarter of a century, my fundamental ideas and devotion to the art of fiction has not changed. More than ever, I believe in its importance as a means for seeing life whole. It is a bulwark against the transitory inflation and distortion of options kindled by the dispensers of unassorted facts. And if fiction itself is subject to fashion, passions, fads, and the exploitation of uh, Partisan cliques. Nevertheless, it remains a refuge for those who want to explore the human condition as sentient man and woman. I'm reading this book first time as you're listening it for the first time. And thank you that you're here. I will be glad if you write me something in my live chat and subscribe to my channel. It will be great. Hi, my friends. Let me know about you or 
your website. I would like to check it around <laughs> when we finish reading. And let's continue. I remain convinced that an apprentice in the art must seek in reading the techniques. Yes, he's saying in reading, not in writing. Pay attention. <laughs> techniques within which he may give form to his own observation. The young writer must persist in comparing his work with the publications of more experienced authors. Therefore, this book emphasizes analytical reading as an integral part of learning to write fiction. So you have to, be some, to have some analytical views or abilities or just have time for it. The short stories included here were chosen to illustrate, as well as so few stories can, a variety of approaches to the task of fitting a tale to its appropriate form. They can serve as models useful to you in measuring your own accomplishments. Or accomplishment. With pride, I point out that two of these are by former students of mine, Joy Williams and Mark Costello. In the spirit of sometimes frenzied agitation about the prominence and role of women, it may be necessary to remark that though Joy Williams is the only work by a woman in this collection, there are multi Tudinous novels and stories by women that could have served as well for examination, discussion, and emulation. I recommend that you read the stories for pleasure before you buckle down to analyze them. I think it's always good to do that, doesn't matter what story it is. <laughs> It might suit you to read them all before you begin my first chapter, but I want to leave that you, that to your whim or discretion along with all the other practices and approaches I recommend. I think a teacher must offer possibilities and alternatives, not prescriptions. So he means all the stories he's talking about later, you can read across the whole book and then read his book and try to analyze those stories from the point of writer, reader and writer. So he's teaching mostly how to read to become a better writer. Hmm. I would rather encourage as best I can whatever personal enthusiasm or penchants you begin with. In any case, you'll find in continuing through my chapters of comments that reading the stories once is not sufficient. You should return to them often enough to be really familiar with them so that when we examine a few lines from any one of them, you'll recall how that passage is related to the whole story. I have not prescribed any particular projects to be completed in conjunction with the reading of my text. My assumption is merely that while you're reading, you're also working on stories or a novel. I can promise that some of the things I have to say will mean more and will probably be clearer to you if you are actually at work on your own fiction. Hey, have you started writing something already? That's great! So, this book can help you to do it better, to do a better job. So he's saying, I can promise that some of the things I have to say will mean more and will probably be clearer to you if you are actually at work on your own fiction than if you are merely thinking about making a start. Hopefully this book will still have something to say to you months or years after you 
of first open it for I have touched on some of the subtlest problems of the art as well as many of the fundamental ones. In general, I have attempted to follow a progressive line of complexity starting with relatively simple matters and ending with the most difficult, but you'll find that the late chapter on theme returns to the same concern as the earlier one on choosing a subject. Choosing a subject. Did you choose your subject? I chose my subject some years before, years ago. It is not a duplication of the earlier chapter, but a more probing examination of the sources of imagination from which the creative act emerges. I make no apologies for this doubling back. It is intentional and intended to imitate the natural progress of the writer, of the writer, which must always be cyclic. As you go on writing, you will make an endless series of spirals over familiar landscapes until at last the familiar takes on the wonderful novelty of something you yourself created, something that did not exist before you gave it a fictional form. I hope you're enjoying it. Okay, this is it for today. I will not try to bore you to death. <laughs> I'll try to read you I will read you more next time. It's just one page to finish this author to reader. And after that one page we will read writing fiction, the mechanics of fiction, section one. And thank you very much for listening. And thank you very much for coming to be with me here today. I appreciate it very much and please subscribe to my channel we will read more books uh, and I hope it will help you have fun bye bye